There's 11, 12, and 13. These are the learning objectives that you will um, hopefully learn by the end of this chapter, this recording of uh, these three chapters. So it's important to note that there are timelines with historical foundations, um, which most nursing care was provided by religious orders. And nursing was actually considered a calling. And then the Renaissance period, um, the influence of religious orders declined, and it was helped along by the Protestant Reformation in Europe. And nursing continued to move more fully into the general population, so it was no longer primarily the providence of religious orders. Later, nursing care became more um, secular and more structured. There were formal training programs um, that were begun in the Industrial Revolution. Women continued to push past societal boundaries to improve nursing education and patient care. Now, in the early 1980s, the nature of healthcare began changing dramatically as cost reduction and quality improvement issues sur surfaced. Um, also, during that time, managed care emerged. Uh, a very important figure in nursing, and you guys will always hear about Florence Nightingale. And she was a very highly educated nurse with a high social um, standing. And she actually decreased the death rate. This is what she's uh, known for uh, during the Crimean War. Uh, and you might ask, how did she do that? <laughs> well, it was uh, simple, through hand washing. Um, so the death rate she decreased from 42% to 2% because of her um, simple hand washing techniques. Um, and just remember, in Nursing 288, you guys will work on a QAPI project, so a QI project, quality um, control project. And a lot of students choose to do hand washing because, you know, up to today, doctors and nurses still do not wash their hands properly prior, during, and after patient care, uh, which we all know can cause an infection and other complications as well. So, um, I mean, the, the most important thing is to, to wash your hands and educate your fellow coworkers as well to do the same to decrease the infection control, just like Florence Nightingale. And just remember, by the simple technique, she changed nursing um, to become more of a respectable profession. Uh, she believed nursing was an art. Um, and one that required um, organized, practical, and scientific training. Um, another important figure is Clara Barton, which some of you may know. She was the one that organized the Red Cross. Um, and then Lillian Walt started a visiting nursing service uh, for poor families in New York City. Mary Breckenridge started the Frontier Nurses in Kentucky. And those are still in operation today. Linda Richards was the first trained nurse um, that was documented as well. Um, and there were many others as well. And for your discussion board, I will have you share um, about some of those other uh, nurses that were, um, you know, influenced nursing as well um, and made it to the A and A Hall of Fame. Okay, here's your question. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to look at that or a minute. And now the next chapter is chapter 12. So that's legal and ethical principles. Um, so we're going to be talking about law. 
And just remember, law mandates how we must behave towards each other, right? In a civil manner. Um, while ethics establishes how we should behave, statutor statutory law is uh, constitutional law and enacted uh, laws like the Nurse Practice Act, or in Michigan, we have the Public Health Code. Um, legal principles are HIPAA. Failure to follow those HIPAA guidelines will result in civil and criminal penalties. There is a patient bill of rights and informed consent that you all know uh, as nurses. A big one is, um, is when we neglect our patients, right? Um, that's, that's a big one in nursing. Um, so that is, um, is right here under, um, under negligence and malpractice. So it's important to know what negligence means. And it means it is the failure to use such care as a reasonable, uh, prudent, and careful person would um, use under some similar circumstances. So if you were actually negligent, right? Um, professional negligence is also called medical malpractice or professional malpractice. Um, omission or commission of an act departs from the standard of care that a reasonable, uh, prudent person would do in the same or similar circumstances. So if you were accused of um, being neglectful, then there would be another nurse who is an expert um, testimonial nurse who would take the stand uh, in the court of law and will, she would actually testify what you should know, um, what you've been trained to know and understand as far as care for a client. Uh, malpractice is the improper or unethical conduct or unreasonable lack of skill by a holder of a professional or official position. Medical malpractice is professional misconduct. Failure to perform your professional duties, failure to meet to the professional standards of care that results in harm to another. Four elements must be present for a person to recover damages for malpractice. Duty of care obligation exists to confirm to a recognized standard of care. Breach of duty must be a failure to adhere to an obligation um, from a recognized standard of care. Injury where there is actual damages that have occurred. Um, causation injury was uh, foreseeable caused by a breach of duty and um, the conduct was the cause of the injury. Standards used to provide malpractice standards of care, uh, facility policies and procedures, you all have to follow and, though, and know those as well uh, as you practice as LPNs. Um, you will do the same as registered nurses. And remember those will protect you um, and those are protocols um, in your job description um, in professional literature as well um, that you can follow. It's expert opinions, your State Nurse Practice Act, and the reasonable um, person standards. Um, these are guidelines to prevent which is performing only those skills um, which are within your scope of practice. And a lot of you during the discussion board um, said that you, the week three discussion board said that you strongly believe that a lot of LPNs and nursing homes go um, above their scope of practice. Well, just remember by law uh, as LPNs, if you feel and know that you're going above your scope of practice, you have the right to say no to your director of nursing and you can report them to the board. Um, so again, 
remember we are covered under the um, public health code and Michigan does not have a uh, nurse practice act. So whatever doesn't um, follow that, you're going outside of your scope and um, it is reportable. So it's important to stay current in your field of practice, um, delegating carefully and legally to other personnel, administering the drugs using all the rights of medications, being aware of your own strengths and weaknesses and advocating for your patients is very important as well. Here is question two, make sure you answer it and place it in the Word doc. All right, chapter 13, care and safety standards, uh, competency and nurse accountability. Whew, mouthful. <laughs> Um, so most new grads are at the advanced beginner level. It takes about two to three years to become competent and develop organizational skills as a nurse. Um, as an experienced LPN, you have already developed these organi organizational skills, uh, but you will still need to expand your knowledge. So I'm hoping with... Um, you know, this course, you're, you're reading the material, you're looking at the activities, and you can see that as a registered nurse, your knowledge is um, expanding gradually as well. Um, so you'll base to care for the increased complexity of clients as well um, in healthcare facilities. Um, an important agency here is the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, which is the AHRQ. Uh, which has morbidity and mortality rounds. Uh, they record actual case studies of medical errors and then allow experts to add their comments on how to prevent these errors in the future. The above case study um, that is on your slide in this um, is on a duplicate order of insulin. Uh, just remember you will answer this on, um, on the Word document that's provided that's based on the insulin, um, insulin uh, medical error and is based on um, the case study as well. Remember QSIN with our six overarching concepts. So QSIN ensures that all nurses develop knowledge, skills, and attitudes for continuous quality and safety. Benchmarks for judging nursing care are the standards of practice via the ANA code of ethics that we learned about earlier and individual state boards of nursing, which defined our scope of practice and licensure requirements as well. Standards of care, state and um, national nursing organizations <clears throat> develop standards of care as well, especially organizations that establish policies and provide position statements as well. Then there is also a personal accountability the RN should maintain current level of expertise with continued education and competency updates, um, occurrence reports, those we file even um, if an incident has not occurred. So in a nursing home, you probably know this as an incident report as well. Um, happened, it is almost, um, it is a system assessment that is completed by um, the advanced care team as well. So how could that have been prevented? Um, so just remember this team will grab all the incident reports in the facility and discuss them um, and then um, kind of discuss interventions and a plan of how this can be prevented in the future for um, other patients or um, residents. So the RN directly involved in the error or who discovers the error completes the occurrence report. She documents the errors in omission or commission 
and measures taken to safeguard the patient. Positive steps is the improved quality of care. Um, and then we also do a root cause analysis, which identifies the underlying causes as well. It's designed to seek errors of processes rather than lay, lay blame on individuals or groups. So with incident reports, we don't want to, um, with root cause analysis, we don't want to lay blame on um, the nurse that actually performed the error. We want to uh, review it and make sure that there's not a systemic problem. So um, that's the system type of error. And question 13 comes from that error as well from the H, uh, I'm sorry, AHRQ morbidity and mortality rounds. It's the link that's attached. Okay, so question 13, you will have to answer this. And then these are the learning outcomes for this week. All right, thank you.